When these Become the Villain DLCs were first announced, I was very excited specifically for the Voss and Pagan ones, but I was also a little concerned that Ubisoft may ruin these characters or portray them in a way that isn't true to how they were and who they were in their respective games. However, after Voss Insanities, those concerns were annihilated. I loved Voss Insanity. They had such a good understanding of the character and expanded upon him, his backstory, and some of the other side characters in significant and meaningful ways, making Voss an even better antagonist than he already was. Now I was really hoping they could do the same for Pagan Min, and I think it's safe to say this DLC is everything I wanted and more. We got more depth to Pagan Min, more understanding of his backstory, and the entire situation with the Gale family that wasn't explained in a ton of detail in Far Cry 4. Obviously, we knew that Pagan had a thing with Ajay's mom, Mishwari, but we didn't exactly understand how serious and important that was, specifically to Pagan. I understand Pagan Min so much better now as a character because of this DLC, and all the extra story and new information we learned makes total sense for the character. It doesn't feel out of place or retconned or anything like that. It feels like an understanding explanation for why this character is the way he is. And again, I'm gonna bring it back to his relationship with Ishwari Gale because that is such an important focal point of the character and the DLC. Plus, we actually get to see Ishwari through Pagan's visions, which is cool because because all we ever knew her as in Far Cry 4 was a jar of ashes. And we even get to see how she meets Pagan. May I present to you Ishwari Gale, the Tarun Matara. My king. Essentially though, Ishwari was caught in the middle of two madmen, her husband Mohangale, the ruthless leader of the Golden Path, and Pagan Min, the king or tyrant according to those Golden Path losers, of Kirat. Both were fighting over her like she's a treasure or a goddess, and she grew to realize that she didn't love either one of them. Pagan, of course, however, cared about Ishwari more than anything, and they even had a daughter together, until Mohan in a jealous rage killed the child as he refused to let Pagan Min have an heir. Which which then of course led to Ishwari killing Mohan and escaping to the United States with Ajay, while Pagan refused as he believed he had a duty to serve Kirat. It's a super dark and twisted family story, but it also makes Ishwari's final request to Ajay make much more sense, and we even get to hear that exact request to Ajay as well, which is really cool. If anything to me, this further enforces the fact that Mohan Gale was really the villain here. Obviously Pagan had his flaws in it too, and Ishwari still felt like her and Ajay would never be safe with him, but at least he didn't kill her child. This also all helps me understand why Pagan was actually so kind and caring for Ajay in Far Cry 4, and why exactly he sees him like a son and wants him to inherit the throne of Kirat. Pagan feels so humanized and vulnerable in this DLC. All the man really truly wanted was a family, people who loved and cared about him. He often dreamed of Ishwari, his daughter Lakshmana, and Ajay as one big happy family, and the fact that it all ended so tragically is actually really sad. You can feel how badly he wants it in the DLC. But then of course there's his alter ego, the crazy psychopath who stabs dudes with pens, the tyrant. The tyrant is a representative of all the flaws and the dark side of Pagan that you often must fight throughout the DLC. It's essentially like a split personality because there's the part of Pagan, the true deep down part that just wants a family and wants to be happy. And then there's the part of him that has always wanted power and to be perfect. That's a constant theme you will notice in this DLC. Pagan wants to be perfect. He has to be perfect. Everything he does must be perfect. His gold statues all around Kirat, when he sees them all dirty and broken, he immediately needs to fix it. He needs his perfect image. The man even rewrites his own perfect ending for Far Cry 4, which was probably the most hilarious and favorite moment of mine in this DLC. In his life, not only to protect his adopted son, but to save all of Kirat. No. no, don't leave me. Don't leave me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love this country as I loved you and as I love your mother. <laughs> oh, so this is what we're telling people now, are we? And what am I supposed to say? I was shot in my own dick. My helicopter was blasted out of the air. No, oh, no, 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 that's not a fitting end for me. I want people to think I'm dead, not boring.
He's still that witty and charming character who has a ton of funny moments, and Troy Baker, the GOAT <laughs> video game voice actor in my opinion, just voices him so well. He's honestly one of the most likable antagonists I've ever seen. I'm gonna train this quite useless, weren't they? I mean, this isn't so hard. That's because it is real. No one asked you. But of course, it's not just Pagan who benefits from the added depth and insight. Even Yuma has a decent role in this DLC, which I really enjoyed. As she loves Pagan and wants to help him in any way she can, however, she notices that his love for Ishwari and desire for his family had made him weak and careless as a ruler. Pagan just can't mediate the two sides of his life, and it makes even more sense now why he wanted to give the throne to Ajay, because he just didn't want it anymore. Of course, I feel Mohangale receives a lot more screen time as well, and his rivalry with Pagan and their fight for not only Kirat, but Ishwari as well felt like a big focus. And it really shows the Golden Path in a more negative light, which I never liked the Golden Path to begin with, even in Far Cry 4, so I like how they continued in this DLC to really show there isn't really a villain to this conflict. Both sides have done more than enough evil, but if it comes down to Pagan and Mohan, I choose Pagan without a doubt. I will say I wish there was a little more of Ajay Gale in this DLC. I really liked Jason Brody's role in Voss Insanity, and I was hoping we could maybe get a little more depth to Ajay, but it makes sense why he didn't get that. This is really more about Ishwari and Lakshmana, not so much Ajay. Also, the original voice actor for Ajay didn't reprise his role for this DLC, which is a little disappointing, but oh well. It's not like Ajay is in it much anyway. There was also no Amida and Sabal, which I would have liked to see as well, but again, it's more focused on Pagan and his family, so I get it, and I do believe the ending is connected to Amida and Sabal, which I'll explain later. Another really cool small scene in this DLC I found actually explained a little bit of Pagan's past and why he wanted to become King of Kirat, explaining that he had to get out of Hong Kong when he had inherited his father's drug operation, but he didn't like the lack of class and prestige, so instead he set out to become a king. I believe that was explained in a book somewhere as well, but it's cool to get a little glimpse into how Pagan exactly ended up as king in an area he's not even from. The secret ending of this DLC though was very cool and just in case you don't want to know what it is and experience it for yourself, I'll leave a time to skip to if you want to avoid the spoiler. Essentially though, it's a message from Pagan Min to Ajay Gale which is seemingly being played after Ajay has taken over the throne after the events of Far Cry 4 in which Pagan in a living will or just vacation if you chose to spare Pagan explains to Ajay that he was tired of America's interference and harassment harassment of his and Kirat's affairs, especially considering the CIA hired Ajay to kill Pagan. So Pagan tells Ajay he spent a ton of money on nuclear weapons pointed at where, you might ask? Hope County, Montana, implying that the bombs that dropped at the end of Far Cry 5 were actually sent from Kirat, therefore directly connecting Far Cry 4 and Far Cry 5, which is very cool. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I believe the person who sent these missiles was none other than Amida or Sabal. Somehow they took over the throne and used them because I don't see Ajay raining fire for no reason on the country he grew up in. And I really like how the ending of Far Cry 4 still remains completely the player's choice. This DLC works no matter what ending you may have chosen in Far Cry 4, and the game doesn't try and force a specific ending that's canon or anything. So whether or not Pagan is still alive during or after this DLC was completely based on what you chose in Far Cry 4. So I love how they left it open-ended. Now geez, I haven't even talked about the gameplay and stuff yet. Essentially, the DLC works a lot like Voss Insanity, which I was pretty much expecting since it hasn't even been two months since the Voss DLC came out. You have to collect the three pieces of Pagan's mask so he can hide his flaws, and you get one life, and if you die, it starts all over again. There's the same system with the mirror and permanent abilities you unlock with respect. Same currency, just a different name to fit the Pagan theme. And you get these skills and abilities you can loot in the world, and place in your sockets. And of course you get all your weapon cases where you can purchase and upgrade weapons for new attachments and increased damage that you have unlocked through the weapon challenges in the world. I really like this gameplay system, it's really fun, it has some very satisfying progression, and the fact you get one life makes every close encounter that much more intense and suspenseful as you could lose everything. Come on, come on. <sighs> There's also the same style of missions in the world. Of course, there's the weapon challenges, 
houses, safe houses, trials where you must kill waves of enemies to unlock an extra life perk, and delusions where you go through parts of pagans' memories or thoughts. That often has the visions and extra story bits. I really enjoy this system and some people may have wanted something completely new, but I think it works very well still. The world also looks incredible. You guys already know Kirat was my favorite open world of the Far Cry series, and even though this is technically in Pagan's mind, it looks stunning in this DLC. The vibrant colors, the Himalayan mountains, the massive projection of King Pagan hovering above the world, it aesthetically looks fantastic, and it was a really fun little world to explore. I also really like how all the guns have gold camos, and Pagan Min does takedowns with the pen. It all fits that elegant, flamboyant style of Pagan, and it makes sense why everything would look like this in his head. Far Cry 6 is seriously killing it with these DLCs. First, the Voss Insanity DLC that expanded upon and went deeper with the series' most iconic antagonist, and now with the Pagan Control DLC that allows us to understand more inside the mind of Pagan Min, what he wants, more of his backstory, why he does the things he does, and what led to his actions in Far Cry 4, as well as a fun gameplay system and gorgeous new world to explore. I definitely recommend this DLC if you're a fan of Far Cry 4 and Pagan Min. They've both always been very underrated in this series in my opinion. The DLC is $15, which isn't too bad, and you can of course replay the DLC as many times as you like, with all the different mind levels and rewards. The next and final DLC for Far Cry 6 is going to be Joseph Collapse. While admittedly I'm not as excited for it as I was for the first two, because Far Cry 5 is more recent, however it'll be really cool to get in the mind of Joseph, maybe see the Seed family again, and the Deputy, and hopefully a little more backstory to Joseph, especially since he's another one of those antagonists who doesn't actually feel evil. Joseph Collapse is set for March, so we'll see what that's like then, but feel free to let me know in the comments what you guys thought of the Pagan Control DLC, and what you hope to see from Joseph's DLC as well. If you're new here and enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I make a lot of Far Cry videos on my channel, and consider checking out my video on Voss Insanity if you haven't yet. Other than that, thanks for watching everyone, and have a good rest of your day.